This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello, if you're watching this, it means that the world has ended. And also, it's your first day at work. Congratulations. As you know, everyone is dying of and many other viruses, including but not limited to Spiralaculus, Blastitis R3, ossifying pox, keratoic plague, hyperplasmosis, caldic rankle disease, strain 7A, wheezing tremors, sanguinary cryptosis, lucerne strain X, pathological aquatoxicity, spasmodic reaction syndrome, toxicar. In front of you, you will find a labeled emergency DNA blocks. You'll combine them to hopefully create a universal vaccine. But don't worry if at first you don't succeed, developing a universal vaccine might take years. But really, we need you to do it in 15 minutes. Because, like I said before, everyone is dying. Wow, that's quite enough of that. Thank you very much. How about instead we change the subject and tell people what our game of the year is? What could it be? What could it be? It's for science. Efka, I don't think scientists could get anything of value out of no pun included videos. No, it's for science. Listen, if you said it was for entertainment, I might agree with you. Maybe even for culture, if we sensitively broach the The game topic. of the year is called For Science. Besides, we did the same gang only like two years ago. I know, but history has a way of repeating itself. In the near future, submolecular 3D printers allow anyone with a little bit of know-how to print their own viruses. Uh-oh! What are we gonna do about it? That's right, get vaxxed everybody. No, seriously, get vaxxed. But to get vaxxed, we must have the vax, and that is where you come in, armed with every kindergartner's favorite toy, DNA. Get it? Because DNA is life's building blocks, and these are literally building blocks. In For Science, aka the tensest moment of your life, you will cooperate with friends to play cards to various diseases that need to be eradicated. Those cards will present a blueprint for a cure that you will then need to physically build. Then you'll get tiles for curing those diseases as a reward and will need to create a model for a universal vaccine. And did I mention you only have 15 minutes to do it? or 20, or seven and a half, or however long you like. We'll touch on that later. Okay, you might say, I get it. It's like cooperative Jenga with funky blocks and a timer. Well, sort of, but once you dig into the weeds of the science, you'll see there's a whole lot more going on. Let's take a look at the design cards first. Each of them has a number of connection points and block shapes, and at the center of the table are your three labs each of which will be dedicated to curing a fictitious disease, such as yellow lung, violent exonecrosis, or the Omicron pathogen. The design process for this game started in 2012. By playing cards to a given lab, you'll be building a blueprint for how you'll be developing the cure, but there are a number of caveats. For example, all connection points have to match, so I couldn't play this card here, I would have to try and find another valid space for it, or wait until another player plays a card that then matches the connections on my card. There's also the diseases themselves that impose a restriction. For example, to cure yellow lung, the cards you submit to the lab must have at least two yellow blocks. Which doesn't really make any sense. It's like trying to cure a mustard allergy with a deviled egg. But then again, what do I know? I'm not a doctor. I am just trying to save the world. Here's a little wrinkle. At any time, you can have only a maximum of one design card in your hand, and the only way to get a new one is to play your card 
somewhere. Now imagine it's not just you that's sitting there with a card that doesn't fit anywhere but all your friends too. Now imagine that the 15 minute timer is ticking. Now imagine that despite all of these restrictions you can still play a card because it doesn't have to match the disease criteria, it just has to match the connections. What ends up happening is a high noon showdown in a cowboy movie but you're all itching to be the fastest mistake in the west because the sooner you can unload a card the faster you can draw a new one that's hopefully helpful. But you might ask what do with a disease that you can no longer legally cure? Well this is the genius bit. You can also just get rid of cards from anywhere. Waste a card from your hand, waste it from a lab, it doesn't really matter for the first two, but as soon as you waste a third card, every third card, you add a mutation. Mutations, additional conditions imposed on diseases that you have to cure. If the Omicron pathogen requires you to only play design cards that share a shape with one another, that might be tricky. But if you've been trigger happy wasting cards, suddenly it might become the a uh, airborne Omicron pathogen that will also require design cards to feature this specific connection. Which isn't just something you have to find the right cards for, it's also something you'll have to build. Or knock it over. Either way is good. And the mutation card deck is very much aware of that. Instead, you might get a mutation like Unstable, which requires you to build a towering contraption all sitting atop of a slidey triangle, or a mutation like Elusive, which means you now have to build it whilst also pinching your ear. But the cruelty doesn't stop there, because a mutation might just invalidate all the cards that have already been played to a disease. Let's say that I've spent time and attention to find the three perfect exact cards to cure a disease, and then someone wastes a load of cards and now a mutation is drawn that means I need to have more green arches than I have purple cylinders, and I have no green arches and I have all purple cylinders. So what do I do? That probably means that I need to waste all of these cards and draw yet another mutation. Yet the beauty of this design is that it actively encourages hubris. I could waste those cards or I could just keep adding cards to that lab because there is no maximum number of design cards, just a minimum, until I have a greater number of green arches. Except now, instead of having to build something like this, I have to build something like this, which I have! Look! Except it's blue tacked and I'm holding it, otherwise it's impossible. Which is exactly what you want from a real-time dexterity game. You want your friends to stare in disbelief. You want them to yell, No! What are you doing, you numbskull? They didn't actually use the word numbskull. My friends don't say the word numbskull. They say something else. Else. The point being, if a game gives you kids blocks and says you have to make shapes out of it, you want it to be ridiculous. And here's where we arrive at the second big element of this game, the actual building. And this is the best stacking game I've ever played, full stop. Stacking can be fun and silly. It can produce beautiful moments of disbelief, skill and also hubris, or it can be a puzzle, something to rack your brain over. Very rarely, it's all of them successfully. Yet that's precisely what For Science achieves. We've mentioned before that the cards you put into your lab serve as a blueprint for what you actually have to build, but we haven't mentioned how. The trick here is that visually this blueprint easily translates into how your structure should look, but it is deliberately misleading. All that matters here are the connections. Whilst the bottom piece has to be the bottom piece, the actual orientation of the shapes doesn't have to match what's on the card, nor does their placement represent the height. What you have to ensure is that if something is connected on the cards, those things have to touch each other physically, and if they're not connected, that means no touching. Which leads to these beautiful moments of revelation when you struggle and things fall and you think, oh poo, Ooh, this is literally impossible. Turns out that rather than curbing your enthusiasm, all you had to do 
was curve your perception. And let's not forget the pieces themselves. These aren't precarious, finicky, elaborate shapes. They're chunky, heavy things. So this won't be a game of daredevil balancing, although sometimes it can be, and that's when you know it's all gone wrong. The stacking is yet another puzzle to solve, which I admire. It puts everyone on the same footing and always gives you an out. It makes stacking a different kind of fun, one that other games simply don't offer. It's a new experience under a familiar guise. To round all of that out, you also have the tile mini game. Each tile will let you build and complete pathways for germs. Tasty. Have enough enclosed gems within complete pathways and you win. You can dismantle them, arrange them and rebuild them however much you want. Just reach the target number and Bob's your uncle. There's nothing particularly innovative or clever here, but that's not necessarily important. But what is really cool is how it punctuates every other aspect of For Science. There are effectively two types of tiles, smaller ones acquired via gain in microscopes and bigger ones acquired by gain in dossiers. The latter ones will give you lots of germ symbols, however they may have many open exits, whereas the smaller ones often provide endings letting you close off any straggly bits. Which means you need a good mix of both to succeed, and striking that balance might take a few games to master. But how do you get microscopes and dossiers? Good question. Here's a little tidbit we neglected to mention. Labs are not the only places you can play cards to. Each player also takes on a character with a special ability, something we'll touch on later, but also space for a personal project. Unlike the labs that anyone can play cards to, you are the only one who can contribute towards your personal project. Plus the base comes predefined with specific connections and starting pieces, some much harder than others others. There's good reason for that. This not only adds another layer of puzzle towards card play because now you can strategically distribute cards to more spaces, but also lays another tightrope to balance on. Labs are your source of dossiers and big tiles, whereas the bulk of microscopes will come from your personal projects. And by now, I hope you're beginning to see the foundations of a varied, robust, dynamic and innovative system. But I bet you're asking, what makes this game of the year material? Well, unfortunately, I'm not academically certified to answer that question, and we'll have to refer you to my colleague. It seems you have swallowed a wooden pie. Oh, sorry. I have real clients now. Hello, my name is Dr. Efke, and over my many years of residency at No Pun Included, I have diagnosed multiple Game of the Year conditions. And after performing rigorous examination, I am happy to announce that For Science fits the bill. Which reminds me, here is your bill. You don't have to like pay it immediately, but patreon.com slash no pun included is all I'm saying. No other game I have ever played goes out of its way so much to be loved by everyone. Some of you might recognize the designer of For Science, Eric Roos, from his other game, Spirit Island. And if you do, you might be going, huh, this game is nothing like Spirit Island, which is true, but if you compare them, you might see one important parallel. Almost everything in For Science is customizable to make it be whatever you want it to be. What do I mean by that? Well, let's use a scientific analogy. Here we have the Ovum Gallus Gallus Domesticus, or to use its non-scientific name, Common Garden Variety Household Chicken Egg. As we all know, there is only one correct way to boil an egg, seven minutes. What is that you say? You're calling me an idiot? It's actually six minutes 30? Oh, wait, there's someone saying 10 minutes over there. That's someone saying five minutes, eight and a half. And I can also hear unboiled, which I mean, you do you. The point is that no matter how you slice it, an egg is still an egg. It's delicious, but more importantly, it's delicious because you can have it however you want. And it's exactly the same here. We already alluded that you can set the time limit to many different degrees, making the game more tense 
or chill based on preference. That is just scratching the tip of the shell. You can, for example, customize your labs. So now that the requirements for the diseases are different. You can customize the mutation deck to only include silly cards or puzzle cards or dexterity cards. You can customize the end game trigger, making it more difficult or perhaps even easier. You can customize the blocks themselves, swapping them out for an entirely different set of blocks, which are also more colorblind friendly. You can also add in events, the rate of which you can customize as they come in and then they ask you again to do silly things or dexterity things or puzzle things, which you can again customize because it's a deck of cards you can make any individual game of full science to be whatever you want it to be, tailored to who you're playing with and it's still Great. This is the thing with variability and accessibility and approachability in board games. Publishers want their game to technically suit everyone because they can sell more copies and lo and behold, so many area control games that say two to five players on the box, but we all know it probably only works best at four to five players. I think it's only apt that we award our game of the year title to a design that doesn't just cynically ad hoc unpolished modes, instead offers a consistent and robust experience no matter how you serve it. For example, I've played with plenty of people in my life that just do not want to play real-time games. It's stressful. Well, guess what? You can literally excise the timer from For Science and you're still playing For Science. Where's the tension in that, you might ask? Well, now the game tracks how many design cards you've used in total and gives you an end of game score based on that. So the tension hasn't disappeared, it just shifted to a new paradigm. Because the core of the card play was already an efficiency puzzle, the game as a whole does not suffer, it just lives under a different constraint, which is brilliant. I cannot think of another real-time game where you can rip out the real-time part and still make it make sense, much less be as good of a game. I'm not saying get yourself a copy of For Science if you're never gonna play it real time, but that's what I mean when I say this game doesn't cynically ad hoc untested modes. There's so much variability, yet it seems like every mode has been thought of, every alteration has been considered, and it isn't exactly the same experience all the time, but that's a good thing. It's a big box with so much change inside. I also really like how accommodating it is. If you struggle with manual dexterity, or if you'd simply rather, you can just place blocks horizontally on the table. You can all agree to play like that, or each of you can play however you want. Furthermore, there's just a shocking amount of playable characters, each offering a unique ability that A, sounds fun, B, provides a different challenge and C ensures that everyone has a role that suits their playstyle and adds significant contributions. One aspect of gameplay we haven't mentioned yet is verifying builds. If you're working on a lab project, personal project, or even the tile minigame, someone else must verify that what you've built is legal. Also, in case of the lab project, someone else must also verify that even just the cards you've placed are legal before you start building. This is obviously infuriating because let's say I've just completed this personal project and I know it's good. I just want to knock it down, get my points, spend them on tiles, but first, I have to interrupt another person, get them to stop whatever they were doing just so they can come and check on my homework. And then I'll be like, uh, 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 you're missing a green arch. And I'll be like, nah, -uh, I'm not because I have an ability that lets me omit one block. And they'll be like, okay, that's legal. You can knock it down. Uh -huh. Finally, it's infuriating in the best way possible. And it adds yet another point of design tension. Now, knock it down. 
and you can take on a role that gives bonuses for verifying builds, although I would argue you'd want to do that in a game with at least three players. First of all, that person has a clearly defined role in the dynamic now. Second, they can do things that no one else can, therefore adding contributions and feeling useful. Third, when you verify tile builds and actually enclose these germs, that powers up yours and everyone else's special abilities, so they feel double useful now. Every germ you enclose in a pathway adds points of that color. That obviously adds towards your victory goal score, but different colors unlock upgrades for different characters. The overworked lab assistant as a special ability can use one hand to support or stabilize another player's build. Now that is an amazing ability in a dexterity game, but for each three red germs I enclose on my tiles, they can now use an additional body part for these support endeavors. Doesn't say what body parts you're limited to. Honestly, I would buy this game based on that one character alone. I would buy it just for the character that takes the blocks away, brings them back to the table, dumps them out and shouts, got your samples. Hilarious. Do you think we have them convinced? Well, it doesn't hurt that the current version of For Science already comes with a pre-baked expansion in the box. Oh yeah? What does it add? <laughs> so there you go, for science, undeniably our game of the year 2021, a year that could have used a few more laughs, a bit more cooperation, definitely some disease curing, and rediscovering the joy of building blocks. There's one final note that's important to add, if you want to get your hands on a copy of for science, well, that might prove a little tricky depending on where you're based. At the time of publishing, US residents can still snag a copy directly from the publisher's website, and that's the one that comes with the inbaked expansion, but everywhere else seems to be waiting on an imminent reprint, which might or might not have the expansion included. Once again, stock issues were a bit of a thing in 2021, so you can't blame us for staying on theme with our pick. Does that take a right? Yeah, it'll do. What do you want to do now? I don't know, I think I'm just gonna see what's on the telly. And that's the end of this instructional video as we know it, and I feel fine. If you also feel fine, the Tiger Team Corporation congratulates you on surviving this viewing. Please remember, science responsibly. And now, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the best community on the web to go and learn something new. I frequently use Skillshare because when I want to broaden my understanding of a subject, I know I'll find an expert delivering a tailored and structured class. Skillshare offers a wealth of classes from household things like plant care or interior design to specialized technical fields like web design, photography, or even board game design. And sometimes things just get downright saucy. Lately, I've been watching the creative cooking simple sources to elevate every meal class by Khalees. Yes, that Khalees. Did you know she's also a master saucier? I love sauces. Everything from a basic bechamel to marinara to salsa to curries, even a milkshake. Ah, sauces are so good. They make your food better food. Khalees class explained things in a very approachable structured manner and also gave a lot of cultural background that explained why I like the food I like and how I can enrich it with some simple tips and tricks. If you even have a sous-son of an interest in cooking, get in on that sauce game. Things are gonna get gravy. Not sure if Skillshare is for you? Well, the good news is that the first 1,000 of you to click the link in the description of this video will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today.
As you know, everyone is dying of Ford Escorts.